Dozens of suspected drug dealers are spending the night in jail tonight after being arrested during a roundup this morning. We're tracking a developing story out of Lexington where one person was rushed to the hospital after a shooting. And a man convicted of firing shots at police last year learns how long he'll spend in prison. This is WQIT News at 530. Good evening to you. Deputies in southern Kentucky spent the day rounding up suspected drug dealers. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office says it is going after more than 80 traffickers. And deputies say it's all part of an ongoing investigation to keep drug dealers off the streets. Our Phil Pendleton has the latest on the investigation in our top story at 530. There are more than 80 names on three pages here given to us by the Pulaski County Sheriff's Office. 80 suspected drug dealers. Police say these people on these pages are accused of dealing in everything from oxycodone, heroin, meth, marijuana, and prescription drugs. You just take your time, buddy. Watch your hand when you come up, all right? 67 year old Gerald Simpson is headed to jail. Police say he is accused of cultivating more than five plants of marijuana. But he and dozens of others are the targets of an extensive drug investigation that began earlier this year by Sheriff Greg Speck. Aggressively addressing that problem in our county. In fact, since January, the sheriff's spokesman says they've opened 250 new drug cases. Set the box. This is the third roundup since Speck took office. Uh, the sheriff's office, as well as the state police, find that many of the crimes committed in the Commonwealth uh, are centered around drug trafficking. The jailer told me that the majority of these people are facing bonds between $7,500 and $10,000. They will likely spend the night today in jail. They will go to court tomorrow, and most of them will probably make bond. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. All the suspects were arrested on district court warrants. Police say that most of the offenses were for oxycodone trafficking. We continue to track a developing story out of Lexington. Police are investigating right now a shooting on Winchester Road. Witnesses say a man got out of a car at the driver's licensing center and ran inside to ask for help. We're told the car has a bullet hole in the back window and some other damage. Witnesses also say they saw the man being wheeled out of the office on a stretcher. We're still working to get more details on exactly what happened, and we'll bring you the latest information we have on WKYT and WKYT.com. We now know the name of a man accused of stabbing his estranged wife. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Floyd County. Police arrested Thurston Sturgill yesterday after he stabbed his wife in the High Hat community. Police say he then drove to a home on Paradise Lane in Letcher County and told the police chief he thought he had killed his wife. Sturgill's wife Tina was flown to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Sturgill is charged with attempted murder. In Bell County, police have identified the body of a man found dead inside a box. Police say 51-year-old Doug Bailey was found dead along Industrial Road yesterday. Police say they started investigating after police in Wisconsin and Georgia called them about a murder investigation. Police believe the murder happened in in Wisconsin. Bailey's body was found in a box over an embankment along with a second box. And in McCreary County, investigation continues after an officer involved shooting. It happened yesterday at a home on Dry Ridge or Day Ridge Road, rather. The McCreary County Sheriff's Office says they received a complaint about 56 year, 46 year old Anthony Murphy causing a disturbance. Deputies say Murphy turned toward officers and pointed a gun at them. Officers then fired back, hitting Murphy. He was flown to UK Hospital. No officers were injured in that shooting. A man convicted in the attempted manslaughter of a police officer has learned his punishment. Timothy Nutgrass was sentenced to 20 years for firing shots at police when they were called to his Anderson County home in March of last year. Mark Barber is outside the courthouse in Lawrenceburg with the latest. Timothy Nutgrass was convicted of four counts of wanton endangerment and two counts of the attempted manslaughter of a police officer. During his sentencing, that added up to about 40 years in prison. But the 49-year-old will only serve 20 of them because those sentences will run concurrent. We are not surprised by virtue of the fact that uh, it's a very serious offense. William Johnson, Nutgrass's lawyer, expected this, but he had hoped the judge would grant probation. He did not. 
The 49-year-old shot at police in March last year when they were called to his home on Mays Road to investigate a harassment complaint. When police took cover and set up a perimeter around his house, the 49-year-old tried to escape. He took off in a car, crashing into the sheriff's cruiser. Johnson tells WKYT that was out of character for Nutgrass. The man has, has no prior criminal record, and uh, so what happened on that date was certainly unusual. Johnson thinks it may have happened when Nutgrass was not in his right mind. The evidence did mention that there was uh, some mixture of alcohol with over the county uh, counter medicine. Nutgrass will get credit for the 21 months he has already served, so he could be eligible for parole in about two years. In Lawrenceburg, Mark Barber, WKYT. And Nutgrass could be eligible for parole in about two years. New tonight, police are trying to figure out who stole a trailer from a truck company in Lexington. Police say employees at R&L Carriers on Nandino Boulevard noticed the trailer was missing on Saturday. We're told it was full of more than $20,000 of home improvement equipment. The trailer itself costs $5,000. We are in the middle of some really mild weather right now, but looking ahead to even warmer weather as we get into the weekend. Yes, Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us now with more on this unseasonable weather that they're right in the middle of, Chris. Yeah, exactly right. As we get closer and closer to that weekend, we're going to be talking about record high temperatures into much of the Ohio Valley, including right here in Kentucky. Out there this afternoon, it's been rather gray, though. Some late evening clearing taking place, or late afternoon, early evening clearing, I should say, taking place across parts of central Kentucky as of now. So we're starting to see at least a few stars out there now post-sunset. Farther east and southeast that we go, clouds are a little thicker. And look at that. A few lightning strikes showing up into Pike County, just north of Pikeville, far eastern Kentucky. Look out to the west of us, though. Big, big temperature swing ongoing in the Plain States. That is a blast of almost springtime air. And this is a storm system that will be out at, or coming in behind that big blast of warm air. That'll be right on top of the Ohio Valley as we gear up for the weekend. And that can mean record high temperatures coming out ahead of that. Some thunderstorms, high winds, followed by a big temperature crash, to say the least. It is active in that seven-day forecast with a full breakdown in just a few minutes. Lexington is moving forward with a plan to repeal taxi regulations in the city. Last night, the Urban County Council voted to repeal the ordinances that regulate taxis. Those regulations include provisions that regulate fares and driver background checks. The move would allow cab companies to be more competitive with ride sharing companies like Uber and Lyft. The issue will go to a full council for a vote in January. Lexington and Louisville are the only cities in Kentucky to regulate cab companies. What if someone had a list of everywhere you go, along with the exact time you arrive and leave there every day? Well, it turns out that information is on many of our cell phones. Here's how to beat that feature that's tracking your moves. They are not new, but most people don't exactly know what they are or how to find their frequent locations. So settings, privacy, location services. We're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of your apps system services, and then at the bottom you see here frequent locations. And once there, most are shocked by what they find. I feel a little bit sick. This is everywhere you've been, the time that you arrived and you left. It even labels your assumed home and work addresses based on the amount of time you spend there. So you arrived last night at 6 p.m. and you left your house this morning at 8 a.m.? Yes, I did. It's a little creepy. I don't like that it's doing it without my knowledge. One of the concerning things is this is hidden from you in your phone. And privacy experts like Noah Swartz of the Electronic Frontier Foundation have long been concerned about the implications of this hidden information. This could be used by abusive partners, or police in an investigation. It could be used by your boss or your company if you gave them access to your phone, if you were using a work phone. Cell phone data can be subpoenaed for both criminal and civil cases, like divorce proceedings. Who can see this? <laughs> Apple says the data is stored only on your device, unless you opt in to improve maps. Then Apple says it stores your data anonymously. You can delete the locations from your phone by clicking clear history, but first you have to know how to find it. Now, did you know it was there? No. Did you turn this on? No. 
And I will be looking at my phone after that story. Frequent locations are meant to provide you with personalized services like predictive traffic routes. You opt into sharing your location with Apple when you first set up your iPhone and start using its Maps app. Still to come here on WKYT, elementary school children receive the chance to go to college today. Coming up, we'll show you how UK students got real world experience in the classroom. I'm Bill Bryant, down to work for Kentucky's brand new governor. And we now know who the richest and the least wealthy members of Congress from Kentucky are. The bottom line is on the way.